Welcome to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Whether you are a seasoned investor or building a new real estate business, this is the show for you. Whitney Sewell talks to top experts in the business. Our goal is to help you master real estate syndication. And now your host, Whitney Sewell. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, our guest is Daniel Humland. Thanks for being on the show, Daniel. Thank you, Whitney. It's a pleasure to be here. It's an honor to have you on the show. It's been great to get to know you over the last, what, year and a half to two years and, and uh, just see your success and you moving forward as well in this business. And, and uh, Daniel is an engineer at Intel who started and runs the Real Estate Investment Education Club at Intel. He also owns a real estate investment firm named Alon Capital LLC, where he uh, where his partners, you know, he partners with people to purchase multifamily investment properties. Daniel is also the host of Win Multifamily Show, a show that focuses on learning to move from Wall Street to Main Street. Love that. So, Daniel, thank you again. Give the listeners a little more about your background and getting into the syndication business. And let's jump into uh, to this transition that you're helping people with. And and you got a whole podcast on it. So I'm looking forward forward to learning more myself. Absolutely. So, um, as as you said, I'm I'm an engineer at Intel that uh, has been my day job for you know twenty some years. But at somewhere along the line, they they actually figured out that I was a software developer who could actually speak to people too. And so I, I transitioned into the role of a, a teacher, and I've been with the develop uh, the developer relations group at Intel ever since. And that's actually parlayed quite well into the investment world as well, because I work with investors on syndications, like a lot of us in this space do. And it's a technical, complicated area. And so we really focus on trying to make it a, a clear avenue for people that have full-time jobs and to show them a clear way that they can get involved in getting their investments you know, from Wall Street to Main Street. Nice. Now, I, I think it's it's a great resource when you can show people that I think it's a, it's something in our industry that investors, uh, there's a, a blind spot there, right? When you've been, you've been stuck in, in Wall Street or the stock market, you know, for forever, that's all you've been told your whole life. It's hard to mm-hmm. believe that there's this option over here where you can just go and invest with somebody <laughs> in real estate. And so, you know, so let's, let's dive into that a little bit, Daniel. And I'm, I'm sure, you know, you've, especially doing a podcast on it and now just in where you work as well, uh, you know, that you've been able to grow your, your, probably your knowledge base and, and your ability to help uh, investors in this, uh, in this, that are in that path or in that, in that place. Uh, so get us started a little bit on helping us show somebody that clear way, uh, you know, between, or maybe how you do it from, you know, Wall Street to, to Main Street. All right. Well, um, you know, one of the first things that you need to do, of course, is have a clear vision yourself of what you're trying to do. And, and I started back, uh, real estate has always kind of been in my family. Um, I learned about real estate really from my grandparents, who my grandfather worked for International Harvester his entire career. And then it was only once he retired that he and my grandma decided to go in and purchase. They purchased a 125 unit building together with their, with their brother. And it was actually only once he retired that he started building actual generational wealth, which he left to my parents. And, and uh, you mean, it was, it, it, was, it was more than he had accumulated in his entire W-2. And I was 10 years old when this happened and uh, watching the entire process. And so I've, I've, I've done some single family home investing along the way. I, I rode the wave of 2008 in single family homes, but I actually really got around to investing in syndications in 2017 or so, mostly listening to uh, Joe Fairless and to your podcast. Uh, so thank you very much for, for doing that. I learned a ton from just the past podcasts that you've done. And uh, in doing that, I decided, hey, I need to figure out this real estate syndication business. And so I, I kind of looked at it in two different ways. I said, well, I can go find somebody who can be a mentor to me and to educate me, or I can go educate myself with people that are already doing it. And so I, I actually chose that second route. I, I became a limited uh, p- partner in a syndication down in Houston, Texas. It was a 56 unit syndication. Uh, it was called Sycamore Grove. It was uh, in Pasadena, Houston. And it uh, turned out to be a pivotal point for me because when I invested with them, I I asked them for 
all of the paperwork. I asked them for the legal work, the insurance, the underwriting, the, 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 all the papers that were associated with the rent roll and T12s. And I went through the whole thing and just really made sure I understood what was going on. And I did a lot of emailing with them, just back and forth, great, pleasant conversation. I started doing some small tasks for them to help them in their business. And eventually, I guess they appreciated it enough that uh, they invited me to be a co-GP on one of their deals, or two of their deals, actually. Um, and so I did my first co-GP in Houston, Texas as well, 122 unit, and then a, a second one. Um, I'm involved in uh, raising capital and asset management on both of these. The second one was 196 units. And these were great experiences. Um, I was part of the uh, key principal package there. So I also got my Fannie Mae card doing that. And then I decided, hey, I've got to bring my business to the next level. And so I went out and I just started talking to other investors. Um, and I actually ended up joining, I, I interviewed a couple of different groups and I ended up joining the uh, Mark Kenny Think Multifamily Group. So I'm, I'm part of that group as well. And uh, we, we are trying to align ourselves with people that are strong in this business in terms of boots on the ground, in terms of relationships with brokers and loan officers. And uh, we're, we're building our business from there. Nice. So do you, you know, uh, you know, the path that you took, you know, you, you found somebody that was already doing it and you, um, you use that to help educate yourself by partnering with other operators, but ultimately by investing first, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. LP. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. is that something you recommend if somebody can, uh, you know, before they're actually going to get into the syndication business and try to be a, a syndicator operator, do you, you know, do you usually advise say, Hey, you know, why don't you invest passively first uh, just to learn a little more about the industry or, or not? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's definitely a progression an educational progression. Um, I, I recommend people listen to podcasts and read books first, to be honest. And then once, once they have an understanding of the process, um, then they can venture out a little bit farther. And yeah, I, I recommend that they passively invest in somebody else's syndication. Uh, somebody who has a track record, somebody whose track record you can, you know, dig into and investigate. Uh, in the case of this group, they had already done seven syndications before and they had a good track record, good returns. I could go through and investigate all of it. Uh, I ran a criminal background check on them just, you know, just in case. <laughs> wow. But um, uh, so, yeah, definitely go and investigate it and learn everything you can from passively and syndicating. And, and a lot of people will want to keep it there because, um, a lot of the people, for instance, at Intel that I work with, they have full-time jobs and uh, they're very busy people and they are not specialists in real estate. They're specialists in engineering and marketing and HR. And so for a lot of people, you know, that's, that's the sweet spot to be. Uh, but then some people like to get their hands a little dirty and they want to continue going on to an active manager route. And so for those people, you know, um, we, we actually, I love talking and working with those people as well. Awesome. Well, well, let's let's talk about the the people who have been in Wall Street, you know, in, in the stock market for most of their life. Those people that you're helping uh, to really break that that mindset, right? That this is the only way. This is you know the way everybody's done it. You know, uh, and and I just think there's you got to learn a little bit, right? And it's out maybe outside of your comfort zone a little bit to you know to jump into a syndication. But uh, but uh, you know, I'd like to hear just how you've helped some people that uh, have really uh, maybe only invested in the stock market to really open their eyes to this opportunity. Sure. So the, one of the first things that I did was I realized at Intel that there is a stock investment club, there is a startup investment club, but there was no real estate club. So I immediately went to Intel HR and I said. I, I want to run the real estate investment education club at Intel. And it, it's a club where there, there are no sales pitches whatsoever. It is purely educational. People come in, you know, they can talk about what they do in their business and leave their contact information afterwards so that others can contact them if they wish. But uh, it's, it's really opened my eyes to the spectrum of types of real estate investments that, that busy individuals like to do. Some of them are, in, a lot of them are interested in things like house hacking. And so we bring guests in on those topics. We bring guests in on, on uh, mortgage note investment, on buying mobile home parks, on buying single family homes. It's a large amount of the uh, talks that we do there. So it's a generalized real estate group. And it's great to really get to know the, the people that are there and just to understand where they're coming from in their investment process. Um, so I've been running that now for almost a year. 
Uh, and we do weekly guests. We bring in people every week to to speak at that group. It's grown to a couple hundred people now. And uh, you were a guest there not too long ago. I, as I recall, we had uh, a little over 300 people for that particular group. Yeah. No, but I, uh, I was very thankful that you were there. It was a great, great group. Um, but I think sitting down and talking to people one on one is the best way to get to know them. Just hearing, you know, what they're what they're. Uh, issues are where they want to be in three years, how they're going to get there, and uh, understanding and helping them with their real estate. Um, I recently actually just had a person come up and ask me to be a mentor to them at Intel in terms of real estate. And so I'm starting to put together a curricula for not 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 something that's paid, just a one on one, you know, sitting down and let's talk about real estate and let's figure out what works for you type program. So it's it's been an exciting journey. And it's all about the people that are in that journey. What's um, been some of the pushback that you've received from people that say, oh, wait a minute, Daniel, you know, I've seen the stock market work for this many years, or as long as you keep investing, you know, I, how can I trust some operator over here that's going to go, you know, blow all our money in, in some real estate deal? Yeah, I mean, I, so I haven't got a lot of pushback in that area yet, to be honest. It's probably because, you know, to be honest, it probably just goes silent. Uh, it's the people that I don't hear from that are, that are thinking like that more. Probably so. And, uh, but we have had a lot of people that have said, you know, just what is the process and how do I know that I can trust these people? And once, once you start bringing them through the process of explaining, Hey, the SEC requires that we establish a relationship with you ahead of time. It requires that, uh, you know, we be partners in, 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 uh, this business that we know your accreditation status and all the different things that the SEC requires. Um, once that process is explained through and how a real estate syndication works, most people get it. And so I, I really find that the, the obstacle is more one of education than anything else. Yeah. So I guess elaborate then on, on how you're going about educating some of these people or maybe some things as we're speaking to investors, we're speaking maybe even at a small event, you know, or something like that. What are some things that you're, you're sure to highlight about the syndication business as you're speaking to, you know, these investors and, you know, just why they, I know they're busy professionals, right? But why they should invest in real estate. Right. Um, the number one thing, and, and I take a lot of these reasons from my own personal experience. And so the reason why I got into real estate is because as an engineer, I realized I could sit down and calculate out and look at someone's five-year projection on a particular piece of property. And I couldn't do that with my stocks. And so I said, well, hey, if I want to build a plan where I can retire, then I need to start doing some projections so that I can actually understand where my money is and where it's going. And I, I think that's a really powerful argument for talking about real estate in that you can talk about the projections and you can talk about why they're recession resistant or why, you know, there might be uh, exposure to a, a particular sector of the economy. You can tell the, the strengths and weaknesses of a particular real estate and re the deal and talk about them in depth. And so just being able to go through and dissect that. And you would not believe some of the <laughs> engineers give you so many questions <laughs> when you send out information about a syndication. I, I have sat down and literally written, you know, four, four hour emails answering questions that people will come up with uh, about a particular deal that's gone through uh, and all the numbers and how they work. And it's incredibly detailed. And so I, I really enjoy real estate because you can go through and you have a knowledge about the resistance to, to uh, financial circumstances, and you can make projections based off of it. Yes. And I, I would imagine, uh, I know when I'm talking to an engineer, it is a different conversation. <laughs> I mean, it just is, right? Uh, yep. I mean, I've, I've got some engineers in my family as well. And so I, I understand it. it's just different. And, the, and uh, but numbers is something that most of them get very, I mean, uh, to a a high degree. I mean, right. I mean, yep, it's, yep. it's part of what you do. It's how you think and, and what you've been trained and, and it's so much a part of your job. And, and, uh, and so numbers are so important in our business as well. So the, the questions are so different. Um, so, you know, what are some of the, maybe you can give us a couple of those questions that we could be prepared for a couple of things that, you know, uh, are going to be, uh, are going to be asked no doubt when we're, you know, speaking to people who are, you know, are engineers or have, or, or have been stuck in the stock market. 
Oh, gosh. So I mean, one of the most common questions that I get are just questions about the financial projections and how they work. So that they'll start going through, you know, this is a year one projection, year two projection, year three projection. And how do you do the calculations here? Shouldn't it be this value instead of this value? And I say, oh, no, you have to include economic vacancy. You know, you have to explain how all the numbers are calculated. I, I think a lot of of the um, a, a lot of what it takes to talk to an engineer is to first connect emotionally with them and understand that, you know, this is a business where you're going to be uh, investing in, in real estate rather than investing, you know, in a traditional avenue of investment. Um, and then second of all, how does that all work? And then what are the protections for it? Uh, so uh, obviously some of the common questions are some of the common questions that all real estate syndicators get, syndicators get, such as when can I get my money back? How do I know my investment's protected? Um, what are the returns look like? What are the different points that we get distributions? Who determines who gets, gives the distribution and when they come? Um, you know, so a lot of standard questions, but then just a lot of going through the numbers as well. What are and some then, of those? Or go ahead. Oh, and I was going to say, and for, for a lot of, for the people that are within our group that do start to learn more about real estate, real estate syndication, we also have a, a group that's external to Intel called the Win Multifamily Network. And that's, that's where I do my, my podcast on. And so we, we try to um, do all of our business outside there, keep the, the Intel side is purely educational. And then if people come to me and they're interested you know, we go talk over in this external group and it's a group that helps people from any company, not just Intel. Wow. So share, share some of the red flags for the projections that you might share with, with a, uh, you know, with a potential investor. Uh, red flags for projection. Um, one of the things that I say is, first of all, the, the, the most important part of any syndication is the syndicator, knowing their track record, knowing that they're going to be honest people. Um, they're by far the biggest uh, variable within a well-projected investment. And then after that, um, also knowing, you know, what's the economic, uh, what, what's the economic situation on the ground, knowing what the, the economic situation is with the particular deal, uh, knowing how to go through and just analyze the, the, the due diligence to make sure that everything's in line. Uh, so we, we, we point out that uh, your biggest risk factors usually come into three different areas. It's going to be the sponsor, it's going to be the area, and it's going to be the deal. No doubt. And I couldn't agree with you more as sponsors. Uh, I mean, should be the first thing you look at. Uh, it doesn't matter how good the deal is if the sponsor is not trustworthy. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, you even mentioned that you did a background check or, uh, or Oh yeah. 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 Absolutely. 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 Run a crime. I, I actually encourage people to do that to me if you want to, and you, you want to know, you know, that the person you're working with is doesn't have a criminal background record, go run a background check. You know, it's, it, you can do that. You have the power to do that. And is that something you have to have permission to do from that person or how, how does that work? No, you don't have to have permission for it. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I've heard I mean, other people talk about doing that, but I, I, I don't, I don't know that I've met somebody that actually has. Yeah. Check, check, check with your local laws, obviously. Um, I don't know the laws of every state in the country, Sure. but, um, but yeah, in general, just checking up. And then of course their track record. So um, the, the other thing that I would say is really important in real estate syndication is making sure you're aligned and, and networked with a good group of people that have been doing this for a long time. And so, uh, for instance, I think the first time we met in person was the best ever conference. And so going there was absolutely wonderful, getting to meet all the different people that were there. And uh, then also, of course, getting involved in a mastermind group and a mentorship group. Make sure that you're doing that because you're going to have people there that are pushing you. So uh, those are all things that have moved me forward in my career. And I highly recommend other people do as well. So Daniel, what's been the hardest part of this syndication journey for you? The hardest part, um, once, once you've got the education, the hardest part for me is definitely the networking. I, uh, I'm, I'm an engineer by heart. I'm very happy sitting in the lab working on my project. Um, but once you get out there, just getting to know people, getting to know, you know, the right people and, and how to interact with people. Uh, it's a people building business. And um, that's what we do a lot of at the, at the Wind Multifamily Network is just getting to know each other and, and realizing that real estate is a team effort. 
Was there something that helped you to, to overcome that a little bit, uh, just the networking piece? Because that's, that's a very common fear, right? You know, going yeah. to a room with hundreds of people that you've never met before, sometimes getting started in that room is it, yeah. it's hard. Yeah, actually, the, the thing that helped me with that the most was practice. Uh, I, for Intel, for my job, I, I do public speaking. Uh, so I do a lot of conference speaking, a lot of training and, and seminars. And I, I, there was definitely a transition moving over from being a computer geek to doing that. And then just continuing to practice those skills, reading books, you know, the Dar Dale Carnegie books on public speaking are excellent. And so um, I, I highly recommend in order to get over that fear, you just have to go do it. What about a way you've recently improved your business that we could apply to ours? So I, I did recently join a mastermind group. Like I've mentioned before, I joined a think multifamily group and it's, it's great there because you meet people that, um, in, in the same with many mastermind groups, you meet people that are different than you are, that have different strengths, different weaknesses. You can see how you can work together and interact or how you can learn from each other. So one of the things I did most recently was I joined uh, the think multifamily group. And that, that actually is where we get most of our deal flow from as well. People within that group. And so it's definitely boosted our business. Definitely a game changer when you can be a part of a, a good group, uh, especially when there's many that are way ahead of you, right? Mm -hmm. um, um, Learn from so the best. What about uh, your best source for meeting new investors right now? Uh, my best source is the, the Intel Educa Real Estate Education Club. Uh, so uh, that, that's recently grown to, uh, I think we have a little over 400 members in the group now. And, um, you know, I'm having conversations with people there all the time, not always about syndication, but just about any real estate topic. And so that's, that's definitely been my best source. Uh, so, for, start, so starting your own meetup within your workplace. Yes. And, and actually, I do uh, work with people who are looking to start up meetups within their own workplace. I, I've been working with a person over at Nike here currently, and uh, we're building our networks that way. So, you know, if that's something you're interested in, come contact me. Wow. Now, I just think it's helpful to see you doing that and help listeners to think outside the box a little bit. You know, your, your W2 position right now could be a great place to grow a network potentially. Uh, mm -hmm. So what about the number one thing that's contributed to your success, Daniel? Boy, the number one thing that's contributed to my success, um, it's my family. Uh, having having my, my family there and having their support with me, you know, a lot of times when you're working a full time job and you're also doing real estate, you're you're working very hard. And having that family there with me, my wife actually participates in all of our investor calls. We hop on the phone together, and uh, we we um, we talk to all of our investors as a team. And so she's been my biggest support. Wow. That's, that's really neat. I've not heard of, prob uh, of anyone that does that. That's really neat. Tell me a little <laughs> bit about how you've managed the, the, the family, the W2, you know, uh, plus doing real estate and getting in the syndication business all at the same time. Yeah, it's, it's, um, I, I live by my calendar is, is part of the answer. Um, but I, I wake up every morning and lay out exactly what I'm going to do that particular day uh, at around, you know, 7 to 7.30 in the morning or whenever I happen to get up. And um, I record podcasts during my lunch hour and uh, then, you know, make sure. I think the most important thing really is, though, that when you're when you've got a, a W-2 and you've got another business, both of them need to be treated with respect. Um, you owe your employer your time and your effort mentally and physically, whatever it happens to be. And you also owe that to your business and to your investors. And so just being able to do the two and to... Um, also find roles within real estate syndication. There are some roles within real estate syndication, such as uh, you know, asset management or due diligence that require you to be gone the entire day or to, to work full time. If you're, if you're coordinating with brokers to find deals, that very well could be a full-time position. So um, and find partners that you can work with so that you can make your schedule work. And I firmly believe that this can be done by anybody. You can have a full-time job and work in real estate. And uh, sometimes it's a little bit of a juggling act, but between finding the right people to work with and then highly organizing your time, uh, it is possible. It is possible. It's been done too many times. Yeah, there are lots right? of people that do it. So Daniel, how do you like to give back? Uh, so two different ways. Um, the first way is that I, I love to work with people one-on-one. -on -one. Um, we work with people just on whatever real estate that they happen to be involved in, getting their strategies right for being a 
full-time employee and then also working in real estate. Uh, if you're interested in that, go to the Win Multifamily Network, uh, winmultifamily.com. And uh, then the other way that I like to give back is uh, my wife and I give a lot to the Remember New Foundation. And they are a foundation that works to uh, limit child sex trafficking around the world. Mm. And so we give a significant amount to them and uh, partner with them regularly. Wow. Well, Daniel, thank you for giving back in that way. Appreciate your time today on the show. And, uh, and I just, I, I'm, I don't know, it's just neat to see your progress. And I think it's, it's going to be inspirational to listeners as well, who, who maybe they're, they're even in a W2 position like yourself, but they haven't thought about the opportunity that they potentially are sitting on like you were maybe for many years, right? You know, before you, you realize, wait a minute, you know, there's no real estate group here. And, you know, and now, uh, you know, you've been able to, you know, you, you've made other avenues to join other groups and learn more about syndication business and invested passively. And, and now you're, you know, part of your own deal. So congratulations to you as well for making it happen. And I know it's not easy while working full time and full time family. I've done it myself. So uh, I know that's not easy. But uh, Daniel, tell the listeners how they can get in touch with you and learn more about you. Uh, so you can get in touch with me at uh, winmultifamily.com. My name is Daniel Homland. My email address is also, uh, my business email address is daniel.homland, H-O-L-M-L-U-N-D, at Alon Capital, A-A-L-O-N Capital.com. Thank you for listening to The Real Estate Syndication Show, brought to you by LifeBridge Capital. LifeBridge Capital works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate while also donating 50% of its profits to assist parents who are committing to adoption. LifeBridge Capital, making a difference, one investor and one child at a time. Connect online at www.lifebridgecapital.com for free material and videos to further your success. 